In our United Voice series tonight, we're counting the cost of the Tulsa race massacre. Days after a judge struck down a legal path to restitution for the survivors of that devastating event. News 4's Ashley Moss spoke with experts who say the financial impacts are still being felt today. Ashley. And people close to that community calling for restitution tell me the fight is not over. And while it's easy to think that a centuries-old event has zero effect on the lives of people today, clearly it does. So how does the state of Oklahoma count the cost for what happened in 1921? We wouldn't be having this conversation as it had. Days after Tulsa judge threw out a lawsuit to compensate the three remaining survivors of the 1921 Tulsa race massacre, we catch up to Dr. Carlos Hill at his home in Norman. When it comes to anti-black racial violence, even the most de the deadliest attack on a black community we still can't find the compassion to give restitution to three survivors or even have a genuine conversation with the community about what a community reparations program today would look like. Hundreds of black Oklahomans were murdered. But economics expert Nathan Nunn also says the massacre contributed to the largest single episode of property destruction experienced by a black community, leveling nearly 1,300 homes and 200 businesses. It caused roughly $47 million in damages, he says hindering home ownership for generations. This was a warning, a warning shot, or this was, yeah, you know, basically don't accumulate too much wealth, don't become too prosperous, or this could happen to you. And today we know that home ownership rates amongst black individuals is lower than others. So that was 100 years ago. Why are we still talking about this? And so one answer is, well, the effects you can still you can see them in the data, right? Dr. Hill prefers to focus on the survivors, and he says it's insulting not to compensate them. Leslie Randall, Hughes Van Ellis Sr., and Viola Fletcher seen testifying about the horrors firsthand before Congress in 2021. She was 107. I still smell smoke and see fire. I hear the screams. I have lived through the massacre every day. They represent standing claims that were made 100 years ago. So yes, we have to value them. A community was destroyed. And so if a community was destroyed, a community deserves reparations. Now this conversation comes as other U.S. cities consider reparations, including Evanston, Illinois, the first to commit paying $10 million over 10 years to direct descendants of black residents who lived in the area between 1919 and 1969.